Hey there, my friends. This is John Henry Sheridan uh, from John Henry Sheridan Music, also known as The Love Dinosaur. And um, I'm going to talk to you about diabetes, veganism, and how that applies to me and from my experience, my perspective. So this is not a lecture. I will not shit on you. I will not tell you what you should do. Um, so please respect it. If you're going to watch, um, please agree now with me that you're going to watch just to hear what another human being has to share. Uh, you know, um, I'm not asking for advice. I'm not giving advice, but I feel that sharing my story is something that, um, uh, I was praying this morning doing my, the Buddhist chant that I do. And I was thinking, about just sharing my uh, diabetes and um, vegan story because it's, it's really a big part of who I am and I think what I've experienced may be useful to other people and to not share it seems like uh, a cowardly or in, unjust, unjust because maybe some people need to hear my experience and might help them to maybe you clarify some things or maybe not and if this is not for you then please don't watch it okay that's all. Um, <clears throat> so brief history. Um, I suspected I was a diabetic uh, as early as um, college. I had a good friend who was a diabetic and he was explaining some of the symptoms like urination, excessive urination and thirst. And I had that even at that time, but I got tested and I was fine. No, no diabetes. And then again, uh, I suspected it maybe in my late 20s, uh, maybe for the same reasons, but uh, no, nothing. And also weakness, I was feeling weak, but it wasn't until 2014 summer that I just was hit with the, an assortment of uh, funky feelings, not good feelings. I, like, I was having ice cream and drinking beer because it was the summer. So I was eating more, but I was losing weight, which didn't make much sense. I wasn't exercising that much. And I had various symptoms like chest pains and my eyes were, were getting really tired at night and uh, my gum pains and um, urinating a lot, drinking a lot. So yeah, anyway, I didn't suspect it was diabetes. I just know something wasn't right. So I went to the doctor and the guy said, from your urine test, looks like you have diabetes, but you got to take a blood test to be sure. Anyway, uh, long story short, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, summer of 2014. Now, it wasn't until, I think, about a year and a half later, when I went to see a good endocrinologist in the city, that I was diagnosed with type 1 and a half, basically essentially type one, which means type one and a half, uh, from what I understand is that it's a sliding scale. It basically means you make a little insulin, but not enough. And what my endocrinologist told me I was making a little bit, but it was becoming less and less. So very soon I would be completely type one. So that's what I believe I am right now. <clears throat> um, that was what she last told me. And then she stopped taking my insurance. So then I couldn't see that good endocrinologist. Now I got to find a new one. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's kind of my diabetes history. It started when I was 33 years old, 33 and a half, and now I'm 37. So I've had it for four years, something like that. Um, so uh, when I was diagnosed, I just started researching like crazy, and I discovered over and over again, because I, I was not content with what my doctor at that time was telling me, not the endocrinologist, my regular general doctor, uh, which basically was eat this, you know, standard uh, diet of just like less of the stuff you like. And it just, it was not wisdom. It was just like this thing he learned in school. And, uh, and I could tell that it just wasn't, basically it was that, it was like, eat less of the stuff you like, and um, 
and then take a ton of medicine. And as you get older, uh, you're going to get more and more medicine and you probably get sicker. That was what he was telling me. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. He didn't give a crap about me. So I didn't like that. So I started researching like crazy and I found that you can actually reverse diabetes. Now I thought I had type two. So I was trying to reverse type two by um, having following a plant-based diet. And uh, that's what all my research led to. It was the only true hopeful news I had that I could believe in. And um, my life, uh, I cleaned up a lot of things. My blood work became much better. And definitely my cholesterol is basically perfect. My blood pressure errs on the side of low, if anything. Um, and my A1C was doing much better. Now, my the only thing I really struggle with is my A1C in fluctuation, depending on the season and the winter. I get lazier, I exercise less, I eat more, and I get less motivated, depressed. So my A1C goes up. And in the warmer seasons, I manage it better because I exercise more and uh, probably eat a little healthier too because there's more good fruits available. So, um, but now, now I'm, I, I went vegan. I started in 2014 and then uh, late 2014, I kind of went up and down, in and out for a little while. I don't know. And then I, I would say by, uh, I don't remember exactly. But maybe 2016 winter, I got, uh, I don't know. It wasn't that long that I ate meat again. Uh, I got a little relaxed. Yeah, maybe for about a year, uh, I was quasi-vegan. And then, then for the past two years or so, I've been strictly vegan with the occasional, you know, accidental ingesting of something that I don't, I'm not aware of. But, um, and why would I do that? Um, <clears throat> so, well, I'll tell you, vegans, from my, all my research, score highest on, uh, <clears throat> on all the, the health scores, you know, on uh, having good cholesterol, on having good blood pressure, on having good A1C, if you really do it right. Um, and lowest, lowest uh, percentage of heart disease, lowest per percentage of uh, cancers and all sorts of stuff from eating a plant-based diet, which makes perfect sense to me on just on a deep level. Um, this is why I do it, okay? I'm not saying you should do it. If you're curious about it, I would definitely encourage you to look into it. Uh, I can recommend the doctors that I was really moved by, Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Neil Barnard, uh, Dr. Joel Furman too. And there's actually uh, a health coach named Sid, <clears throat> Sid Garza Hillman, who speaks about this stuff peripherally, more about general overall health uh, and happiness, but uh, he touches on it too. These are all sources of inspiration, hope. Hope, people who talk about being happy and healthy for as long as possible is actually the most important thing, right? So. When I was a type two, so yeah, when I thought I was a type two, right, I was taking a lot of pills. Metformin, sulfonylureas, whatever you call them, glyburide, glipizide. And uh, basically, I researched them and I found out a lot of not so savory things about them. And if you're taking them, I'm not, you know, don't freak out, but I, I was taking a lot of them. Some people just take need one metformin a day, but for me, they were just adding more and more because it wasn't working because I wasn't type 2, but they didn't know that. The doctor I had at the time didn't know. He's like, oh, just take more pills. <clears throat> so, and I didn't feel good taking more, and my blood sugar didn't even freaking look better. Still in the 200s, and I was taking all this crap every day. I'm like, this sucks. So, uh, I'm not, and I'm 34 at that time or something. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life and take more and not even get better. So, I was just reading and researching and you know, I discovered um, that I probably need insulin and insulin only and uh, or nothing at all. Because if I eat healthy enough and exercise, I should, not, you know, according to all this research, I should not need any medicine. So I stopped taking medicine 
and I was eating right and exercising and my blood sugar was still sky high. <clears throat> so I realized I'm probably not a type two. I basically diagnosed myself. Then I proved it at, by getting a good endocrinologist. And she's like, yeah, you, you were pretty much right. Come on, medical profession, you know? So look, uh, if anything, I learned I got to be on top of my, my game as a, as a diabetic. Because it's not that I don't trust the medical profession, but I definitely approach it <clears throat> with uh, wakefully. You know, I don't just accept blindly what's told to me because that first doctor I was telling you about, this guy was, which I changed since then, this guy was, um, he was willing. I le what I learned is I had to hide what I was doing right. I had to hide the diet I was eating because he was going to tell me I should be eating fish and, and chicken and proteins and stop eating all the carbs, right? So I had to listen to him. And then I ate the way I ate as a, as a vegan, as a starch-based eater, plant-based eater, and I exercised. And he saw my numbers going down, and, uh, and I needed less and less medication, which is my goal. Initially, <clears throat> when I was strict about it, about eating vegan and exercising, and then he took credit for it. He's like, see, you don't need an endocrinologist with me. Uh, just follow my advice. Keep doing whatever you're doing and, uh, you know, and we'll be fine. Right. Then when my numbers went up again, he would like get pissed off at me and say, you got to, you know, eat the way I tell you, eat the way I told you, eat, eat the fish and the chicken. And, the <laughs> and I wasn't doing any of that when my numbers were getting better and better, but he was taking credit for it. Then when it wasn't working, he actually kind of scolded me and then just gave me more medicine and gave me this bogus advice that ne that doesn't work. <clears throat> Look, can you eat fish and chicken and have your numbers look good? Yes, of course. Not saying that. But cholesterol might go out of whack, blood pressure. And then here comes the other element about why I'm a vegan. Because upon learning that vegans score highest on all health tests and score they, are, they also score lowest, like on all the, the bad numbers, right? The cholesterol is the lowest, blood pressure is the lowest. <clears throat> um, and if you, you know, like I said, if you do it really well, uh, then your A1C could be lowest as well, which that's my struggle because I still eat processed foods. Um, and you know, I love cereal and stuff like that late at night. That's my, uh, that's my Achilles heel. But, um, anyway, uh, sorry, where was I? Um, well, I just had a, a blackout <laughs> or whatever, whatever you call it. Okay. That, yeah. Anyway, skeptical of doctors. Oh yeah. So vegan score the highest. So the other thing I learned about veganism through this, I didn't really intentionally do it. Although I was back up a bit. Like I said, I was kind of like, was a little bit concerned. I might be a diabetic since college days. And also since early on, my 20, early twenties anyway, I was considering veganism. And I was scared by it. I was like, mm, I don't know about that, you know, but um, but intrigued too. So they did seem the healthiest. Some of them seemed a little bit too pale, the ones I knew, but I don't know how they were eating, you know. But there's some guys that are like glowing that I met. <laughs> One guy told me, like, yeah, when you go vegan, you, your poop doesn't smell anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I don't know about that. But maybe if you're just eating like, you know, cabbage and lettuce all day, maybe it doesn't really. I don't know but I haven't gotten that far. So anyway, like these had signs along my journey of towards vegetarianism, veganism, towards becoming uh, a diabetic too. And um, even towards Buddhism, but that's another story. And by the way, my Buddhist practice is not connected with being vegetarian or veganism at all. Um, there's no like dietary requirement except um, as I pray more and more and develop my compassion, um, veganism seems to be the most compassionate way of life. So that's what I'm getting to next. But that's just my personal path. This is not like a general prescription for Buddhists. Some Buddhist sects maybe have that rule, but not not what I practice. Uh, I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo as an SGI member, and there's nothing dietary, no guidelines. <clears throat> All right. So this is just my choice. So the other thing I said, what I'm trying to get to, 
is that um, when you learn about veganism, you can't help but run across the occasional factory farming video. And when I saw the way animals are treated in these factory farms, I was absolutely horrified. It's the worst horror movie I ever saw in my life. I used to collect horror movies. I was a horror movie junkie when I was in my late teens, 20s. I had 100 movies, at least. CDs, uh, DVDs, and, and cassettes. All your Freddy, Freddy and Jason and, and Halloween. and Horrible stuff. I used to watch it all the time. I loved it. I don't know why. It was a thrill. I was into heavy metal a lot. So factory farming videos are a hundred times worse than any, the worst horror movie. A hundred times worse because they're real and it's actual suffering that's going on every day on a massive scale. It's horrific. So look, if you want to eat your hamburger, that's fine. I don't, I'm not telling you, you got to go watch a factory farming video, but if you do, and if you love animals, I'm sure you will not be able to stomach it. I'm sure. It's absolutely hideous, and you're going to want to go out and, yeah, if you love animals, you're probably going to go out and hurt somebody. You don't, don't do it. Don't do that, please. <laughs> but it really turns my stomach, and I don't blame anybody. I don't blame the people that work in the factory farms for what they're doing. I imagine there, many people might be in a tough situation, and they just need a job, and they have to do what they have to do. Um, some people were born into it, probably, you know, their fathers and mothers were in that business, so they carry it on. And I think many of the people in the factory farming, that this includes milk and dairy as well as meat. I, just th I think many of them still actually believe that that is, the, that is the healthiest food. So it's not like they're deceiving the public and giving public unhealthy food and only eating good stuff themselves. I believe people in that industry uh, don't really maybe have their eyes a bit close to the, to the deepest reality of it until someone dies of a heart attack. I don't know. But, um, so I'm not blaming anybody. I don't want to put a blanket label on, on the industry. Uh, and everyone involved, everyone's an individual. I know that. But when I saw what I saw in factory farming videos, it is absolutely hideous. So me choosing to not eat meat just feels good. It just feels very good. There's nothing bad about it. Now, I should, I, I got to make more videos about this. I can't get into all of it, but I'll tell you, when I stopped eating meat, uh, there are like four main foods that Neil Barnard talks about that are the hardest to kick. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> meat, cheese, sugar, and chocolate. Those are the four main food groups that are hard to kick. Um, I didn't totally kick all of them because as a vegan, you don't have to take out chocolate and sugar, no milk, no milk chocolate, but you could have dark chocolate and sugar. I mean, obviously it's in everything. So, um, but to take out white sugar and refined sugars is definitely a good idea, which I haven't done completely yet, but kicking, uh, meat, meat was actually easy when, uh, if I go back and think about my, um, childhood. I remember I, I didn't want to eat meat. My grandparents and parents had to force me, really encourage me, and I developed a taste. I did, texture was weird, you know. Um, it was work. I didn't like bones. I definitely didn't like fish. I remember like, I remember feeling as a vegan like, oh man, I have to. I don't have to deal with fish anymore. All those bones and those disgusting like eating fish eyes. <laughs> I would see on the on the plate some. No, why? I don't want that. Not I, I mean, I like fish too. Well, well done fish was delicious, but I, I'm, I was relieved I didn't have to eat fish anymore. I was relieved I didn't have to eat meat, even though sometimes I would smell something delicious and be sad. I also realized that this great delicious smell of meat cooking is all the herbs and spices and not the meat itself. You could put that on something else. You could put it on like a, a, sh a portobello mushroom or, 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 or rice. And it's still going to taste pretty fantastic. Just the texture is going to be a little different. And you could simulate the texture with, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, imitation meats as well, which are not health food, but at least you're killing an animal. And they don't have all the fat and the cholesterol in it. Um, not, not the same as regular meat anyway. So, and zero cholesterol. Only, only animal products have cholesterol, by the way. So if you go vegan, your cholesterol automatically goes to a healthy 
number over time. Yes, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so then the, the cheese. The cheese was actually the hardest thing to give up. Cheese and eggs, because I like omelets. Even though, again, when I go back into my childhood, I didn't like cheese either as a kid. I didn't like it at all. My mom would tell stories of how I used to take the cheese off the pizza and eat it like that. Um, I didn't like eggs. I was grossed out by eggs. I kind of ate scrambled eggs, but it was these were like liking cheese, liking eggs came later in life. I developed those tastes. Milk too. I didn't like milk. Actually, I didn't like it. I remember even being disgusted by it. And uh, I'm just and yogurt. I thought that was gross. cottage cheese. I thought that was horrifying. And some cheeses I really didn't like. Some che- I like cheddar a lot, whatever, but Swiss, I like, but um, my body had this, like, this distaste for it, you know? So when I became plant-based, I was relieved. But cheese was sad because of, you know, like, I like places like IHOP. I like going to the diner, and so easy to get an omelet or get eggs and uh, toast or... Uh, you know, like going to IHOP is impossible as a vegan. You can get a cup of coffee and a fruit bowl. It stinks, right? But um, but there are, you know, there are plenty of things you could do. As a, You know, you could always get a plate of spaghetti somewhere. You know, there's so many options, <clears throat> really, actually. But you got to start thinking outside the box. And one cool thing about being a vegan and eating out is, my options are so limited, so I don't have to spend time pouring over the menu choosing. I have three options, so I choose one, you know. That's a cool thing. Also, when I eat, I don't get that f- totally full, disgusting feeling I used to get by gorging on, on meats and stuff. You know that 4th of July feeling? You just eat tons of barbecue, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs and, and beer and just want to, like, vomit. Uh, maybe you've had that feeling. Um, I have. And now I still eat a lot at a barbecue, but it's, you know, it's, it's plant-based stuff. And, um, even if I get very full, that, that full feeling disappears uh, much quicker. It's interesting. Yeah. So the compassion. So what started me is that, is that I want to be healthier. That's what started me on going vegan. And that is a big part of what keeps me on it for sure. Uh, and I'm I'm far from from perfect vegan. I'm far from like the ideal. I would say maybe seventy percent, eighty percent. I'm <clears throat> eating good, and uh, the other twenty, thirty percent, you know, I'm, I still have processed grains and and stuff like that. It, it's plant based, but it's not as it could be cleaner. And and I know that. And it's a process. And when I think back to my childhood, maybe ten percent of what I ate was healthy, and now. Now, 70% of what I eat is healthy, so it's a huge improvement, and there's still room for growth. So I got to look at it that way. When I went too intense and, like, did super healthy for three weeks, you know, it it, uh, it just was not sustainable because it just changed my lifestyle way too much. And it made me too different from my, my family members <laughs> that it wasn't worth it. So the change gradually, in some ways, you know, making the clean break from meat and from dairy – seems extreme but uh but that that's because it has to be you know um in many ways those are drugs if you really realize it you know i had to earn i had to like uh, be you know it's like you know people push push drugs on people drug pushers like i was pushed on put meat was pushed on me no, not blaming my, my parents or grandparents, but it was because, like I said, I didn't like it. And definitely not cheese I didn't like, but it was pushed. Society pushed it on me, so I grew this taste for it. <clears throat> then I became addicted, and giving it up was sad. It was sad. It was a sadness. I think if you have to give up uh, cucumbers, right, I don't think you're going to be that sad. Even if you love them, you're not going to have that sad sadness that comes with giving up cheese because cucumbers are not addictive they're not they're not chemically addictive maybe you could just have a really great attachment to them but there are chemicals in meat and cheese dairy products and sugar and chocolate that are addictive to our brain chemistry so giving them up is is sad for us so cheese was the saddest um i didn't fully give up sweet stuff so i can't say that was that sad 
it was like many of the s snacks and treats like donuts and ice cream and stuff I stopped eating. So that was definitely heartbreaking. <clears throat> but I found things, well, ways to get around it, certain granola bars or cliff bars or I would bake vegan stuff at home. So there's ways to get around that. But there's, you know, and the, even the meat, you can get uh, faux meats. So anyway, this is going quite long. Um, I, <laughs> I have so much to say about it. Look, so I just wanted to share my story. If you're, you know, if you're battling your health and you really want to take it back, um, my experience has taught me that looking into plant-based eating is the solution for most most health problems. M even mental health, it can help from, my, from what I've read. Um, if this is totally not for you, well, that's fine. And thank you so much for actually having an opening mind to listen to me and my experience. So please, you know, um, take this as one person just sharing their opinion. You know, like I said, if, if you don't agree with it, um, <clears throat> I'm not here to argue. I'm not here to tell you what you should do. This is, this is what worked for me and these the strong opinions I've formed through doing this. If you like the video, please like it. Please share it with anyone you think might like it. And have a great day, and I hope to see you soon.